And we need to because I think that the, um, the rights of parents really are paramount. They have a right to direct the education and upbringing of their children. Um, they have a right to know what curriculum is being used in the schools. And we've enacted curriculum transparency legislation so that they're able to do and know whether the curriculum that they have is appropriate um, and whether it's the same with Florida standards. And so parents in Florida have been exercising that right, and they've actually, unfortunately, had to blow the whistle on inappropriate material in the schools. What's your name? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look to see what, leave that with us. Thank you. All right, so then you have a uh, situation where the parents are blowing the whistle on this, and they're finding pornographic books in schools in like sixth grade, and you're like, where is this coming from? And so obviously that doesn't uh, sit well with Florida standards, it's not age appropriate, so they remove it. Now, what the media tries to say is, if you remove a pornographic book from a sixth grade classroom, that that is a book ban. Uh, first of all, in Florida, you can buy whatever or use whatever you want um, as an adult, but when you're talking about what's in a classroom or what's in a school library, you by definition have to curate and make decisions. You may have one book about George Washington. There may be 50 others you could have in the book. You're not banning those 50 books because they're not in the school library. So it's a total fraud, and we, we refer to it as the book ban hoax. And so we did a press conference to be able to uh, expose this, but before I said a word, before we had the parents come up, we just played a video that showed the books and the images that the parents were objecting to. The local news stations had to cut their feed because they said it was too graphic to put on the air. Well, if it's too graphic for the six o'clock news, how is it okay for a 10-year-old school child? So, So we think that that's important. Uh, we also think it's important, and we've taken action, uh, to ensure ideology doesn't overtake our classrooms. We have eliminated critical race theory in our K-12 through schools. We're not teaching kids to hate our country or to hate each other. Not with your tax dollars, we're not. But instead, what we're doing is placing a renewed emphasis on American civics, on teaching kids about the founding principles of our country, about our Constitution, about what it means to be an American, because no matter what path in life they take, uh, they're all going to be citizens of a republic. And there are certain responsibilities that come with that. It's our responsibility to give them an adequate foundation so they're not just listless vessels out there and they actually have an appreciation uh, for the American experiment. And so we've leaned in on that, and that's going to be very good for Florida for many, many years to come. We also had to draw a very important line in the sand. Why we even have to go down this road on some of this stuff to me is sad, but we had to pass a parents rights and education bill to say no gender ideology in the schools. When you're talking about a second grade kid, don't teach the kid that they were born in the wrong body. That's inappropriate to do. And the parents in Florida were very happy when we did it. And this is not just like a Republican uh, thing. There's Democrat parents, independents. They want the schools focused on academics and on the core mission of what the schools. They don't want the injection of these other things. So the parents were very happy. Now, the left was not happy. The media was not happy. Um, and there happened to be one little company in central Florida that wasn't happy that you may have heard of um, called Disney. And, you know, for all of recent Florida history, they basically called the shots when it came to policy. I mean, they effectively had a veto because if they were to weigh in, things just died. And a lot of people told me, oh, if they weigh in against this, watch out. You know, you're not going to be able to stop them. They're a freight train. Well, you know, uh, I took an oath uh, to support and defend the people of the state of Florida. I did not take an oath to subcontract out my leadership to a woke corporation based in Burbank, California. So we did what was right, we stood our ground, and we made sure we protected the kids of this state. And, um, you know, it's a type of thing. I've got uh, some of these Republicans now uh, that are going after me and actually siding uh, with Disney. And look, I don't know why Disney's gone down this road. 
know, when you have executives on these Zoom calls saying they want to jam the sexualization of the programming into these very young kids stuff, that is not appropriate. That's not what parents want. I mean, obviously, the company's struggling uh, right now in a lot of different ways. Um, and so when we see that, uh, that's just something that we have to take a stand against. And so we did that. But the people that are criticizing us, uh, what I just say to them is, we are going to stand for the protection of children. Uh, we are going to fight anybody that seeks to rob them of their innocence. And on those principles, there will not be any compromise. We will be firm in that.